A group of Japanese researchers has drawn up an electronic map that shows changing radiation levels at about 2,200 places over a five-year period. Most of the locations are in Fukushima Prefecture, where a nuclear accident was triggered by the March quake and tsunami. The map was compiled by a research group led by Professor Isao Tanihata of Osaka University's Research Center for Nuclear Physics. The group calculated the estimated radiation levels using data released by the government and also taking into consideration the level of cesium, which drops as time passes. Possible changes caused by wind and rain, as well as decontamination work, were not included. The map shows that a radiation level of 4.36 microsieverts per hour detected back in June in Kawamata town, just about 30 kilometers from the plant, will fall to 1.75 microsieverts five years later. Professor Tanihata hopes the map will help authorities to work out a specific plan for decontamination. Areas with high radiation levels need to be decontaminated, but I hope the map can ease the concerns of residents in other areas. And that map is set to be uploaded to the research center's website on Monday. Radioactive tests on rice have been completed in more than half of the designated locations in eastern and central Japan following the nuclear accident in Fukushima Prefecture. Radioactive cesium has been detected in 4% of the samples, but the highest level detected so far is about a quarter of the government's safety limit. A preliminary examination is conducted while the rice is still growing, and another test is carried out after the harvest. Rice can only be shipped if the amounts of cesium in the post-harvest test are below the government's set limit of 500 becquerels per kilogram in all the locations within a municipality. Preliminary tests are being conducted in nine prefectures. Cesium has been detected in 72 places so far, but the highest level detected was 136 becquerels per kilogram, about a quarter of the government's safety limit. The main test is being conducted in 17 prefectures. Radioactive materials were detected in rice harvested at 22 locations. But the highest level detected so far is one-fifth of the government's safety limit. Based on the interim results, shipments of rice have started in municipalities in 15 prefectures, including Fukushima. The International Atomic Energy Agency will hold an annual ministerial meeting in Vienna for five days starting on Monday. The meeting is expected to endorse an action plan that aims at stepping up safety at nuclear power plants around the globe. The plan was adopted at a board meeting last Tuesday in response to the nuclear accident at the Fukushima Daiichi power plant in Japan. The voluntary plan calls for the IAEA to send inspectors to reactor operating nations to check the safety of their reactors at least once over the next three years. This first checkup would be followed by regular inspections. The plan also calls on relevant governments to set up rapid response teams to deal with nuclear emergencies in efforts to strengthen their nuclear crisis control. During the meeting, Japan's nuclear crisis minister, Goshi Hosono, will give a briefing about his government's plan to bring the crisis at the Fukushima Daiichi power plant under control. A special session will be held for the participants to exchange views on ways to deal with the crisis at Fukushima Daiichi.
reporters with me, Zainab Badawi. Six months ago, we were reporting extensively on how emergency workers in Japan were beginning their desperate struggle to control leaks at the nuclear power station at Fukushima after that catastrophic earthquake and tsunami. 100,000 people living within 12 miles of the plant were evacuated. David Shookman has covered many such crises in three decades at the BBC, and he was one of the few journalists to venture back into the deserted city of Tomioka. The nuclear ghost town of Tomioka. We've arrived in a long street of shops and there's no one here. We're a few miles inside the exclusion zone. A radioactive cloud blew over here six months ago, but experts have assured us that radiation levels have now fallen. A local farmer, Naoto Matsumura, has slipped us past security. This is the main street, right? This is just completely empty. He wants us to see how his community has suffered. We find that it was hit by the earthquake and the tsunami, but then by the leak from the Fukushima power station. This used to be a town of 16,000. This is the main street, but as you can see, it's completely deserted. Motorbikes abandoned, shops completely empty, no traffic at all, weeds growing up in this forecourt here. A shop wrecked in the earthquake, still six months on, completely untouched and all the time that we've been here the radiation level has been surprisingly low the problem is this if you get down to ground level it shoots right up no problem for us on a very quick visit but what scientists are wrestling with is how dangerous this contamination is and will continue to be in the long term it was back in March that explosions at the nuclear power plant released radioactive material the leaks contaminated some areas more severely than others, but everyone within 12 miles of this devastation was ordered out. Naoto decided to stay on. He doesn't bother with protective clothing. In the ruins of a farm, spiders have taken over. Their webs stretch over everything. But Naoto clears a path for us. He wants to show us something. And this is a really distressing sight. This is the cattle shed, the owners left in such a hurry they weren't able to release their animals. Here are two that have died and in each of these pens there are two more making a total of 60. Some animals broke free and are roaming wild. Naoto tries to care for a new generation born in the nuclear zone. He wants to keep his community going. There are no services here. No electricity, gas or water. But the older people still want to come back. Even my mother and father, their wish is to die here. After three hours here, we check our radiation dose. It's roughly half what you get from a chest x-ray. Naoto refuses to think about radiation. He's determined to stay on. But he lives by candlelight. Most of his food is tinned. A dog is his only companion. He wants his town to return to normal. It'll be a long wait. David Shukman, BBC News, Tomioka, Japan. In neighborhoods around Tokyo, volunteers for months now have been digging for answers, looking to uncover the truth as to how much radiation has made its way to the nation's capital. Investigative journalist Kota Kinoshita has been the focal point of the effort. He says the test results from soil samples analyzed in professional labs show dangerous hotspots throughout the city. There are many areas with high levels of radioactive substances. The levels there are the same as in parts around Chernobyl where people had to evacuate. The need to evacuate parts of a sprawling capital of 35 million may have once seemed an incredible prospect. But some experts say the possibility can no longer be ignored. And mothers like Yayoi Inuma are just one of hundreds who believe their children are already suffering the effects. Ten-year-old Hana has had severe joint pain in the arms and legs, deep rings under her eyes, and extreme tiredness to the point she sleeps for hours during the day. All symptoms of radiation sickness, say nuclear safety experts. If it was just one thing.
something, that would mean it was something else. But all the symptoms came at once. When we left Tokyo for a bit this summer, she got better right away. The government's own team of researchers downplay the radiation risks, saying their findings show the biggest threat is public paranoia. Regarding the level of radiation and its impact on human beings, there is not that much difference compared to before the disaster. The danger is psychological. People are stressed and anxious. No shit. Experts around the world hold very different opinions as to how much radiation people can safely be exposed to. The Japanese government sets a maximum of 20 millisieverts a year. But new research suggests even a tiny amount ingested into the body can cause severe illness or cancer. Mika Noro spent the past 20 years in communities around Chernobyl. She's cared for children who fell ill with cancer or suffered growth defects. Most lived in areas where government scientists said radiation levels were not a threat. I am bitterly frustrated and cannot forgive governments for their ignorance. We have seen firsthand how children suffered. We can't let the same thing happen in Japan. What cannot be argued is that the young are the most vulnerable to radiation. In Tokyo, hundreds of expecting mothers are considering or have already chosen to leave. For Yayoi Inuma, a move is not at the moment financially possible. So for now, she keeps her daughter indoors and only buys food grown outside the affected areas, hoping it will give her child as normal and as healthy a life as possible. Steve Chow, Al Jazeera, Tokyo.